Okay, okay. we'll try to do this in a fairly brief manner. Um, again, th this this evening uh, is an opportunity to provide the council with a briefing on the Intermodal Transit Center project and where we are uh, today. Uh, just a little bit of background. The, the Intermodal, Inter Intermodal Transit Center uh, facility um, is envisioned as a transit facility featuring administrative and passenger service areas, exterior covered passenger boarding areas, bicycle parking facilities, and secure transit vehicle parking that will serve as a link between transportation service providers to facilitate the seamless integration of transportation services on the police. Um, this facility was, I guess, first envisioned as part of the uh, the iways and imap program as it relates to the state's uh, public transportation planning and ultimately was identified over the course of the last several years as being a high need facility within region 2a that encompasses all of latah county um, the project really began and, and we visited with the council in spring of last year about march and april of last year um, introducing the council to the project as well as uh, suggesting that we move this uh, forward in kind of a phased approach where we look at site selection, a concept design, construction cost estimates as phase one, and move over into phase two. Um, the facilities, as noted on the slide, would, would be intended to serve Moscow Valley Transit, Northwestern Trailways, Wheatland Express, uh, other inter other intercity van pools, and other services uh, on the Palouse. The the facility is uh, proposed to be largely funded from. Uh, FTA or Federal Transit Administration grant funds in total right now in a combination of existing 5309 awards uh, as well as the Tiger II grant award we have just under about one point well just over 1.9 million dollars in grant funding for the facility uh, we also have city match funding that has been uh, budgeted over the course of the last several fiscal years uh, that totals about 182,000, which brings us up to about 2.1 million in current funding available. And we also have several uh, current outstanding funding requests um, that uh, may move forward at some point in the future. Bill, we have a question for you. Uh, as far as the city match funding, I know that uh, LTAC has stuff out there as far as investment funds. Is that something we can apply for for this, or is that more of a, a on the street type project you know I also would have to defer that question to less because I'm not as familiar with that program yeah actually the the city local match is already funded uh, we, we've taken a combination of uh, local match dollars that we had funded for previous transit related projects that then became available because of you know, varying circumstances and in the 2011 budget process <coughs> consolidated those into those grants of the four grants that were involved those grants that required a local cash match uh, and so that was all handled through the 11 budget process and is in hand now so unless there's additional grant funding that uh, is pursued that requires local match uh, we're, we're covered at this point okay also then I know that uh, the uh, Moscow Valley Transit has been worried about uh, the soft match money that they may lose should the Wheatland shuttle <laughs> go away. Would this be something that they could use as their soft match type money, or or is that not the same uh, designation? I guess i'm not as familiar with the soft match guidelines as perhaps gary um, right. because he's been pursuing that quite a bit but my understanding from recent conversations is some of the um, understanding of how those soft match rules were used with moscow valley transit has changed recently and that the issue of losing the soft match in the form of the wheatland transit is apparently not seen as critical as it was before because of the reinterpretation of the rules uh, so I, I don't know if that's as big a deal as we had thought in the past okay. could this be used well, obviously this is a one-time funding situation and I suspect that typically it's a uh, transportation component rather than a physical infrastructure that would act as a soft match but I'm again I'm not an expert on that aspect of it thank you one additional comment on the match component that, that hundred and eighty two thousand dollars has been budgeted includes match for a FY 11 5309 request so we have more match the tiger grant request does not require any local match 
Uh, the only thing that is required to be matched are the 5309 awards, which was about $267,000, of which there was a $36,000 local match, and then there was another 140000 that was budgeted uh, to be matched for that uh, FY11-5309 request. So at this point, we have over-matching funds on the project. Okay. Sue? So that 5309-2011, 500000 that's pending, we haven't gotten it? Correct. The, the, what has been awarded are... Um, dollar amounts for prior 5309 awards, which includes 236000 that were awards to the city, as well as a reallocation of $200,000 that was awarded to the University of Idaho uh, for a similar type facility that has not progressed in that, in that nature. And that, that totals the 436000 in, in 5309 awards. The $1.5 million comes from the Tiger II um, project that does not require any grant. Uh, matching, which brings us to the 1.9 million. When we add in then the city's match, we are about 2.1 in funding in hand. Tim? Is that University of Idaho <clears throat> is that University of Idaho match uh, going to be used? Can, can, can it be used if, for example, one of the choices uh, is not a university site? And yes, there are no limitations that okay. that money has to be expended on university property or for a university facility. It has to be a transit-related facility. Okay, thank you. Walter? Chasing the money still. Um, at $2.1 million, just to go down through your first three arrows, we're in business. Is that correct? At $2.1 million, <clears throat> we're getting very close. Um, and and I'll, we'll get to that a little bit okay. down the presentation when we get into construction okay. cost estimates. But, but hold that thought, mm -hmm. and let me ask my real question, which is the fourth arrow. What's the point of the pending grant request as related to this project? I guess I'm, I, that's all well and good that we, we're out looking for more money for stuff, but are those three items under the pending grant request necessary as you understand the cost and funding at this time for this project? They would be helpful, but I, would, they, I don't believe at this point in time that they're absolutely necessary. And, and I, would, I would caution that it is a little early in the project stage. We have not yet got to the full concept design and construction cost estimate, but based on estimates that we are aware of at this point in time, uh, on one side, it is in the $2.6 million range with a $300,000 contingency. Um, and so that's getting fairly close to that $2.1 million number. And depending upon if the university is an ultimate user in the facility, there have been discussions of, of capital contributions for construction that would bring us up into that you know, 2.4 to 2.6 range uh, to being fully funded. So the three items on the pending grant request on your slide are parenthetical and, by the way, Correct. We also have requests out for the following. And, okay. cor correct. And, and, those, and the these three requests are uh, fairly low likely receipts of awards. The, the, the 530911 monies got hung up in the congressional earmark discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and it is because the 5309 funds are technically earmarks. So it is, it is unlikely that we see that money coming forward anytime soon. And, and the other two programs have been. Um, stagnant as well. So it, it's those are probably unlikely awards, but I did want to make the council aware that we did have a couple pending requests on the project as well. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the project has broken out, been broken out into two phases. Uh, phase one, which is what we're currently within, would include the facility scoping and programming, site selection, a concept design and construction cost estimate preparation, and phase two would move forward into that final design, uh, future bid and ultimate construction. Uh, we did move through uh, a a, uh, a professional services procurement process uh, in late last year uh, to secure a consultant team to assist on the project and ultimately uh, the council awarded the contract to Design West Architects who is also working, working with WH Pacific as well as Kittleson and Associates uh, for traffic engineering services. We have formed a technical advisory committee that has been steering the project uh, that includes uh, members from all the, the transit providers that will be utilizing the facility. So that includes uh, J.R. Van Tassel as executive director of regional public transportation who operates Moscow Valley Transit within the community, uh, Peg Motley from Wheatland Express, uh, Charlie Neal from Northwestern Trailways, uh, Brett Dillon from the University of Idaho's Architectural and Engineering Services Division, uh, Carl Root as director of the University of Idaho's Parking and Transportation Services, uh, Jennifer Barrett as a representative of Latah County, 
Samantha Seifer is a representative of ASUI. Uh, Mike McGann is a member of the city's transportation commission. And finally, Gary Reedner as a city supervisor and manager of public transit transportation services for the city. With this slide here, it made me, it reminded me of a, a suggestion I had made to Gary, and I'm not sure if it's been followed up on or what have you, but uh, the suggestion was just uh, making sure that we're communicating with the <coughs> folks at Pullman Transit because they've got such a successful program. I feel like right. if there's some way to make sure we're communicating with them. If they ever in the future become a transit provider that crosses the state line and functions sure. over here, it would be really good to make sure that they're paying attention or we're paying attention to what they're doing and vice versa. So I don't know if they've been involved in any I believe Gary's had made contact with Mark Workman okay. over the city of Pullman and has, has provided information that we would we would share as as the progress uh, the project progress. And, Thanks. And you'll recall that not Mark Workman and Rod Thornton from Pullman Transit were both uh, at the uh, quarterly regional breakfast and Rod was actually one of the panelists. So he's he's yeah. been informed of, of some of this too. Excellent point. Tom. Thanks. Yes, please. Um, with that, I'm going to hand this off to Tom Jones to pick up from WH Pacific to pick up from the facility program and site selection, and I'll rejoin you at the end of the presentation. He's been patiently waiting, He's I should gonna... say. Not all of our meetings go this late, <laughs> Tom. Sure. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Madam Mayor and uh, City Council members, thank you. Um, I thought everybody was here for the transit center. I didn't know the bicycle. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. I, I thought I'd take a, a few minutes just briefly to kind of go through some of the details of where we have. Um, Bill kind of did a great introduction just right up to um, our uh, members of the task force. And starting off and start really getting into the, the meat of the, the project, um, through a combination of uh, questionnaires and some interviews that we've had with the, all the, uh, the members of the task force, we were able to come up with a program both for the site itself uh, dealing with the site program elements such as, you know, right now into the services that they do provide, the vehicles, very specifics in the, in the vehicles, length, number of passengers, hours of operations, uh, bicycles and storage and lockers and, and all those good things that we talked about uh, this <laughs> evening. Um, and it's right down into the very specifics in regards to parking, short-term, long-term, overnight, and all those good things to really understand um, the process. Uh, we went as well into the building com components and start looking at where there's commonalities and where there's overlaps. You know, each one of them will need either some type of open space. Um, there'll be either back rooms, lunch rooms, restrooms. To start really determining the amount of open space that's necessary the amount of public space, conference rooms and alike, locker rooms that specifically build up the components. And you know where we are right now is a building structure uh, that we, it's a little bit hard to see in there. We're about 9,100 square feet, okay, plus or minus about 9,100 square feet overall as we start looking at some of the efficiencies, if you will, on the, on the, uh, the, the building space. So you know, our yeah, Excuse yes. me, I, would you flip back to that slide yes. again? I was trying to look at the secured covered bike parking. How many, what do you have there? Yes. At the bottom of the page, I was trying to read those, secured what are the columns biking. over there? 50, you can, 20? You can read that, it's only because you're... It's about 1,000 square feet um, that we have in regards to secured... 1,000 square feet, uh, okay. ...covered bike parking. Awesome, good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Question. Yes. yes. Well, Does the 9,100 square feet include... Are there any awning areas on this, such as you pull under canopies the bus and, so on. and there's an awning over that is to correct. keep the rain That's off That's an of a, a canopies for canopies. covered areas, correct, is an addition to. In addition to the 90. Correct. Okay. Correct. Exterior covered space, yeah. is that all of that? Okay. Yeah, there's looks like another 5,000 feet of covered. Uh, approximately, covered that's space. correct. That's uh -huh. if we get the grants that Bill's got out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you're pessimistic. Could be giant oh, when we use the, the tri-state tent. <laughs> When we get the grant. Whoops, go my back here. Uh, so we start looking at then, armed with that information about what at least the program is, uh, we wanted to be able to develop a process, a series of filters, if you will, that we could start assessing where alternative sightings would be best located within the, the, uh, the community. 
Uh, so we used a series of um, levels, if you will, starting a you know broadcast to really looking at where activities, where locations are, access, site characteristics, and so on. And then as you start going down the, the funnel, so to speak, we start going through another second assessment um, that would filter and identify maybe five potential sites. Identify those for those five sites, narrow those down to a two preferred, maybe semi-finalists, if you will. Um, do those in a little bit more uh, detail in the <clears throat> excuse me in the in the third assessment, and then very ultimately down at the bottom, locating and coming up with a preferred site. So when we come and conclude this initial phase, that we have a preferred site that's been vetted out with the stakeholders of the transit and the community, we have. Uh, concepts that we know what the building looks like, preferred materials, we have a site plan, and we know more importantly what the costs are. So then armed with that information, <clears throat> excuse me, that we can move I think forward. we're getting you a glass of water too. <laughs> it must be something <laughs> of that over there. I knew there I should have had a drink earlier. Uh, <laughs> I'll just serve as the council water board. <laughs> I know, uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, Great so, job, Tom. As we went through um, the first process, here's the five potential sites that we looked at. Obviously, they needed to be um, within um, the transit corridors within the community. Here's the central business district, <laughs> the university. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Makes me feel young again. <laughs> uh, so you of these young. five sites, they need to be adequately sized, adjacent to existing transit routes is preferable located within either the central business area or adjacent to the university currently right now. Uh, and so these are our five potential sites that, um, that the committee had looked at. Uh, so the next step we went back to, as I mentioned, the, the level. Can I just see that? Two. I'm sorry. Could you just show that last slide for yes. three more seconds? So I, one and two are where? One looks like Stookies. That is oh, correct. Okay. Two is Dumas. Stookies. Dumas. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. That's good. Uh, three and four got, are the university. I got, I got okay. The rest of it. Yeah, Very good. Uh, parking lots. Okay. Uh, so then we went through a, a series of um, criteria, if you will, and analyzed those five sites. We've listed those off to the side, one through five on the right hand area, and then looked at certain elements in regards to location, as I mentioned, site characteristics, um, access issues. And the committee went through and rated and ranked each one from one to five, come up with a numerical system and new values to determine their preferred sites. Uh, this exhibit you can see um, by the preference, um, they came up with their number one site and their number two sites. Uh, and really all, the majority of all the votes, unfortunately one and two did not receive anything, and it was really sites three, four, and five. Uh, many of the, the discussions and the comments of the uh, TAC members were saying, Three and four are very similar to one another. So when you look at the numerical numbers, undoubtedly they were they come up very close. And that is the parking lots you can see again is right in the corner. Uh, and then we thought, well, that's true. Why don't we really look at if we want to come to two, you know, alternative or semi-finalists, if you will, alternative sites? Let's really look at three and four holistically, and then look at alternative five. So it was agreed upon to the committee to to look at those um, as the two alternatives and progressed. Um, onward with sites three and five, if you will. Now looking at a little broader, bigger scale, getting a little closer to the ground, you can see for just maybe a quick orientation here of site number three. This is uh, Sweet Avenue as you come into the campus. Here's Railroad and College as you come on back up and meet Jackson right up along this location. And here's Paradise Creek coming into the project. So you see a, you know, an area of, of existing parking lots that are called lot number 60 on the university campus. So, so this is um, U of I land. Uh, as we start getting into the, the site itself, it uh, was brought to our attention by the university where we were looking originally to push this facility to the very north here, that this site is under uh, right now uh, fundraising to locate a new art and architecture facility in this corner. So it was like, no, we're, we're down the road. So that was new information. We looked at that. And then so thus our site moved a little bit to the south, more towards um, this, the Sweet Avenue. So as we start looking at the, the site, this is a one-story structure, approximately, um, a, uh, you see the square footage would fit right in through here, uh, covered bike parking. And here's a platform. Uh, 
currently that exists along Railroad Avenue is this pullout concrete pad for many of the um, transit stops currently that exist within that area, whether it's the Vandal Shuttle that comes through this area or the Eastern and West Loops link here. And again, it's kind of a of an overlapping area within the uh, transit current transit routes where this seems to be, again, why it was such a high candidate. So we are having a pro proposing a pullout along railroad, if you will, extending here along this location. So you pull right into the facility. Uh, the uh, on-site component of vehicles that would come through would be overnight parking, which is one of the criteria for Moscow Valley Transit. It shows about 11 uh, vehicles at that time. Again, overnight parking only, and they would be out during the, the day, which I understand now currently um, they really park out at the, the, uh, the county fairgrounds. Uh, we are looking at f providing five overnight uh, vehicles for the um, parking and transportation services group for the U of I and um, a short-term parking for uh, visitors that would come in, drop off. Um, there's one component with trailways is to have a small little freight area where people could drop freight off or pick freight up, if you will.